idea now with the medical and legal communities in a tug of war and the governments in the middle. Big implications, of course, so our legal analyst Whitney Trailer joins us now. So let's talk about the case and the basis for the court's ruling. Sure. So the case was filed. This was one of many cases that was filed related to the mask mandates. They were filed by public employees, school teachers and everything else. This one was a series of plaintiffs who said that they couldn't breathe because of the mask mandate and what have you. And so they chose to file this lawsuit in Florida. And so what happened was it was scheduled for a trial, but they filed a summary judgment motion essentially saying, hey, judge, can the CDC implement this type of uh, a mask restriction? And the court looked at it and just this trial court judge just is issued her ruling and said no that the CDC didn't have the authority. And the reasons why were, one, under the statute, she said it exceeded their authority, but then she said they didn't give notice and comment period under the mm. uh, Administrative Procedure Act. So it, it, that was to give people 30 days to comment on this new proposed law or this new mask mandate. And she said, there was 30 days, you could have done it. This was 11 months into the mask mandate or the uh, pandemic, so issuing it so late it was not necessary. So she ruled against uh, the Biden administration. So when we look at this, this is mass, let's be honest, this has just been a political hot button for months now, years, really. And they, you mentioned they filed in Florida. I mean, that was, that was a decision made based on what they thought would, would help them. It was a strategic decision for sure. And unfortunately, the judiciary has gotten involved in this sort of political issue because now this is a judge and people are saying, well, it was a, a Trump appointee. And so it's not unusual for plaintiffs to choose where they're going to file a lawsuit, particularly based on where it will be appealed. And so is the appellate court more conservative or less conservative. So they filed here in Florida, knowing that there were conservative judges on the bench and knowing the 11th Circuit would also be conservative. So yes. And these are strategic. always strategic that way. Yes. Yeah, doesn't mm -hmm. matter. So will there be an appeal? Obviously the, the, the time frame is one thing, the political weight is another thing, the medical community is what they have to say. Uh, but when it comes to legality, there's always the fear of precedent, establishing precedent over what the CDC can and can't do, what the White House, what the administration can and can't do. Do you see an appeal? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a great question because the mask mandate was only supposed to be in effect until, I think, May 8th. Mm -hmm. And so it only had a few weeks. So will an appeal make much of a difference? I don't know if it makes sense from the monetary perspective, but at the same time, the fact that we've politicized both the judges in a certain way, that's yes. my commentary, I believe that's happened, and now the CDC, that's also very concerning because that is our, that's who we've put our trust in as the authority on these medical issues related to the pandemic, which is why they had certain authority uh, and it was the, the mask mandates and other mandates were deemed lawful up until this one, some of them were deemed lawful other than the 100 employees and this one relating to the transportation. Is anything apolitical anymore? In, is, in, even in the judicial say. system, whether you're talking about a, a, a police officer killing someone, whether it's a, t a discussion about abortion rights, whether it's something about the CDC, the mask, yeah. I mean, everything comes with a political tag to it now. And it seems to be that that is that a taint? Is that realistic to think that we can stay above that? Uh, I hope we do, because this is really the heart of the Constitution. The Constitution tried to achieve a few things, one of which was a check and balance system. And if the courts are now seen as legislators, right, making decisions based on, you know, political pressure, mm -hmm. then we're going to have a real problem because the judiciary has historically been seen by the public as the one branch of government that we have confidence in. Right. And we're absolutely going to need faith in the judiciary when we have these election issues, which are seem to be going to continue to be the case. And I think what we have to do is the, uh, the uh, confirmation process. It's just become so partisan that it's, it's grandstanding, and that's where I think some of the damage starts. Yeah, when you think about it, I mean, the toothpaste has been, toothpaste has been out of the tube for a while here, but, but, but when we you, talk about, but we gotta pay attention, and voters, we need to pay attention. We all need said, to educate ourselves. Every, every judge is now described as a Biden appointee, a Trump appointee, yeah, a Bush appointee, a, you know, a Clinton appointee. The, it comes with their description, and it means, it's supposed to mean something. It's supposed to tell you where they lean, and 
that's the sad part now. We're discussing about the way justices and, and justice leans, and yes. that's, that's not good. Not right. Uh, Whitney, it's always good to visit with you. We'll have much more to talk about. Uh, sure. We'll look forward to your next visit. Thanks. All right, thanks. Good to be here.